Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Keep Calm and Deliver on webinar. This is being recorded so that it will be available for um, re-review later in the day. First, I want to start by thanking everybody who's joined us. We have um, attendees from all over the world, and that's exciting. So thank you for those of you who were able to make it. I know that times are um, difficult sometimes when you're not in the United States. So um, as I said previously, please use the chat feature to ask any questions prior to the end of the webinar. We will have an open uh, question and answer period at that point in time. We got a lot of people showing up. This is really exciting. All righty. So without any further ado, let me introduce uh, our agenda and our speakers for today. But before I do that, I just want to mention that uh, Motorola and Zebra Technologies were instrumental in, a lot in providing support for the, this webinar, and we appreciate their sponsorship. Here's just a brief agenda of what we'll be covering today. Uh, you know, we're going to have uh, John Parmalu, and I'll introduce him in just a moment, speaking about the distribution and transportation industry trends. Then our CEO, Steve Sager, will talk about um, Android and the one device in the cab. And then finally, our product manager, Daryl Wilson, will speak directly to Mobile Conductor, which is our technology that allows uh, that is now available on Android and it acts as the one interface for the drivers. As I said, our first presenter will be John Parmalu. He is uh, with Motorola Solutions and a good friend of ours here at Extend Data. Then we have Steve Sager, our CEO and President, Daryl Wilson, our Product Manager, and I'm Georgia Brown. I'll be your moderator for today. So without uh, any more introductions, uh, John Parmalu is here to speak for Motorola. John, take it away. Hopefully here to set up the conversations. I do appreciate it. And, uh, talk about set up conversations with Steve and Daryl later. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the industry. We the big thing that we see impacting the market um, in our slide is we see poor customer service. Uh, you know, we see lost customers due to flexibility and work schedules. Uh, it starts to impact our productivity as far as we're doing you know, multiple trips you know, out to cover the same work orders. Um, certainly the increased fuel costs um, inside the, the market and then uh, employee costs. Employee costs are two ways. One is as far as just the ongoing headcount costs, but also there's a cost associated with fulfill existing, existing positions. So as we kind of drill down into this in the next slide, we'll take a look at kind of what's going on from a state of the industry trends. So overall, a couple of major things are hitting. Um, in 2013, it was um, kind of a challenged year for revenues in many cases. Um, we're seeing an uptick, you know, generally, but um, 2014 is looking strong. Fuel cost, like we said, is is tough. So um, and driver shortages that was that's kind of been uh, persistent for the last couple of years. But a couple of things that we're seeing that's changing now is really the uh, Food Safety Modernization Act, the Fleet Safety and Driver Safety Logs are really what's driving a lot of behavior, and again pushing towards you know one one piece of equipment to simplify a lot of those things. So the, there's a compliance now where we have to move off of paper and you have to move on to electronic um, hours of service and records um, is driving behavior, um, as well as the pre- and post-trip inspection now where it could be done on various things, you know, whether you lease the truck or, you know, in paper forms, manual forms. Now that is being driven to uh, basically one device, you know, where the, device, the driver's logging in for the day, doing the pre-trip inspection, trailer inspections, load inspections. Um, vehicle checkout safety and then start the safety logs for the day, tracking miles, hours of service, and taxing information. Um, so that's a, it's a huge area. Then those, the other area is the Food Safety Modernization Act is the other one driving behavior. So, um, so those are a couple of the major, major issues we see. If we move into the next, as we kind of look at the next slide, so what that's driving is really 
putting the pressure on organizations in order to be flexible, in order to get visibility into your fleet, um, in order to kind of leverage back-end ERP like big data, uh, combining that with the mobile transaction. Again, uh, driving towards one piece of equipment that does everything. Um, so if I want to merge and get my analytics, I have to have it basically all my back-end data is no good without you know marrying up with what's happening in real time. So that drives sort of real-time orders. Um, we can see new orders being placed or changed basically on the fly if that happens. Um, any kind of scheduling changes, sequence changes, all of that can happen in real time now on the device instead of basically losing you know part of the route. Uh, dynamic routing. And dynamic routing meaning scheduling, whether it's you're changing quarterly, monthly, or daily. Um, you know, the idea of mobility gives you the flexibility, and now that you have the visibility into your fleet, um, it gives you the flexibility. So if there's anything around um, hot, hot shots or anything like that that need to be changed, um, and again, from a compliance standpoint, if you're running a, a couple of routes that are running too close from an hours of service issue, um, you can basically start to see that. So, and then again, building analytics with uh, breadcrumbing and geofencing so we can tell, hey, where are assets rolling, how many miles they're running, what's our idle time. Um, in addition to the normal you know, customer satisfaction and shipments. That's starting to drive in the next slide, at the same time merging with consumer operating systems such as Android <coughs> and smartphones coming into the field. Um, so we see, as we take a look at operating systems here at Motorola, you know, what's, what's leading the field. So Microsoft is, you know, we're not abandoning Microsoft and Motorola. Uh, from the Motorola solution side, you know, 95% of ours or more is on Microsoft today and will continue to support Microsoft Windows Embedded uh, moving forward. But that said, if you take a look at this slide, it's pretty obvious. You know, Android is dominating the smartphone market and is dominating what operating systems are coming into the businesses. Um, so that said, if you take a look at the next slide, is Motorola, we kind of take a look at the snapshot of the uh, family picture. The products, as we release them into the market from a manufacturing standpoint, will basically will have some products that will be Android only, and we'll have hybrid products like the MC67, which will run Microsoft or Android, or you'll have the more traditional Microsoft products like the MC65, 75, 45. Um, so the the point is is that you'll have a regardless of um, you know which extended data application you're running, regardless of where you are in the life cycle and the change. As you're dealing with the, you know, do I go Microsoft? Do I go Android? Can I do it both? Um, you know, we're there to support you from a from a hardware standpoint, and then we're you know we're standing behind Extend Data as they move forward as well. So that's a little bit. That's a pretty quick flyby on the industry and uh, kind of what we're doing from a, an operating system and how we're impacting our or how we're changing as a result of consumerization and building on that. So why don't I turn it over to Steve and uh, Steve, why don't you kind of give us a, an overview? Yeah, Steve, go for it. Let's hear um, how this relates to next generation delivery. To the next slide, Lord. Can everybody hear me okay? Loud and okay. clear. All righty. So as, as John said, there's a lot of dip, uh, things happening in the, um, the marketplace from uh, regulatory compliance perspective, from a safety perspective, and then there's this gigantic, never seen before uh, kind of momentum in terms of the proliferation of uh, mobile computing devices that are used by just about everybody. And um, what we're seeing is, is quite a bit of convergence as well that uh, a lot of the in-cab technologies that used to run on proprietary systems are now all moving to standards-based uh, communication, standard-based mobile operating systems. And so it's a very exciting time, but it also can be a very uh, difficult time to navigate through all of the options. And so what Extend Data has done is really two major things. One, we've created an environment that can run in the cab of a truck that allows a driver to operate a, a device and have access to capture information and feed a number of different in-cab uh, automation uh, technologies or software applications. And then the second thing that we have done, we have created seven years ago, we brought to market 
a proof of delivery application that is really, um, I don't want to say at the center of the environment for operating one device, but it definitely is that business uh, enabling application that can provide lots of incremental business value to be able to justify investments in all of these uh, different technologies. So with that, let me just provide a couple of different definitions when we talk about proof of delivery, what we mean. Number one, it's the capturing and validation of delivery ticket detail information where products are being delivered or where products are being picked up. So it's, it, to us, it's not just a matter of saying, hey, I was in this location, but being able to um, actually prove that you were there uh, pulling up to a stop or a location, scanning perhaps a barcode in that location to say, now I have physically uh, entered the, the, uh, the location, and then to be able to scan specific product off of my truck, whether that product is cases or pallets or eaches uh, within cases, so that you're able to provide that track and traceability all the way out to uh, the destination or the customer location. Second thing is clean invoicing. So oftentimes we get to a location and there are conditions or circumstances that happen where you may be short of product that you're delivering. Perhaps you're delivering an overage more than what the order or the customer had originally asked for. Or there may be returns type scenarios where you have to be able to take product back on your truck, but at the point at which you're doing that, record the reason codes for processing those returns right there uh, at, the, at the point of pickup. The third item is on-time communications, so that as events and transactions occur, we have the ability now to update your business systems in an on-time fashion. And when I say on-time, it might mean real time. It might mean based on certain conditions. So if you are going to do an override to return product, you may want to alert a manager or a department immediately that that product is coming back on board the truck and that the warehouse should be able to anticipate receiving that product at the end of the day. That's what we mean about the on-time communications. If you are in an accident, perhaps, the ability to get outside of the truck, be able to take pictures, maybe even be able to take video of the circumstances in the environment uh, that had um, contributed to the accident, and being able to send that uh, information in real time is the kinds of things that we're able to do now with the cost of carrier networks uh, coming down as, as uh, quickly and, and competitively as, as they have. Uh, the fourth area is indisputable evidence. These, these are the things also that contribute to our definition of proof of delivery. But now with this device that is being carried by the driver, their ability to take pictures, to capture electronic signatures from their customers as product is being delivered or returned, the ability to scan barcodes, single dimensional or three dimensional barcodes, to assist in the track and traceability of that product out to its destination. And then the ability to capture all of this information and store it in an online repository that you as the customer or the provider of, of the distribution service can either push this information out to your end customer or we can create it or keep it in a repository or portal to where you can give them access to serve themselves and look at invoices, pictures, you know, date ranges of information, uh, all that support indisputable evidence of, um, of the delivery. Go ahead and to the next slide, Georgia. So in talking with our customers throughout multiple industries and getting their feedback, here are some of the big, big uh, topics or the big business justifications for implementing this type of proof of delivery technology, our generation of technology. Number one, it's uh, visibility. Uh, there has been proven a 40% reduction 
in a new driver's time to ramp up and to use the different applications in the, in the cab. So now most of the information that a driver has to be able to look at, uh, capture, use in terms of their daily route can be all accessed from one device, one user interface. That cuts down on their ramp up period. Disputes. Some, this, this area alone is sometimes the one business or cost justification area that, that can contribute to the, to the ROI of an entire solution. So now if you have indisputable evidence that you're delivering certain products, there is up to a 70% reduction in the disputes. So we don't have customers saying, hey, I know I was supposed to get, but I didn't get. Or you delivered three pallets instead of four pallets. Uh, now we have all of this indisputable evidence, and we are able to see these disputes and non-payable invoices uh, shrink considerably. So big factor. The other factor is back office labor. Because we're electronically capturing this delivery information, and then this information is being fed to back office systems, through integration, there is no longer a need for manual data entry. Uh, individuals in your back office who otherwise would be processing paper that comes back and trying to decipher what was written on the paper. And was that a number seven or was that a number one? Uh, so all of the errors associated and the labor associated with the manual data entry can go away. Day sales outstanding for some customers uh, in particular industries. This is a big issue for others not. But I will tell you, and for an example, in oil and gas, when a service is provided at the lease site or the well site, in some cases it might be two, three weeks before an invoice is even produced. And it might be 60, 90 days before that invoice is paid. Now, at the moment that the service or the product is delivered, an invoice is created in real time. So it is fall, falling upon the customer um, to uh, pay immediately um, based on the products and services uh, that were delivered. OK, um, route productivity. It may, this one may seem a little bit um, um, needing more explanation. But here's the thing. As John Parmelo had said, more compliance more regulation, more requirement on the driver to be filling out paper where really their job is to deliver products from point A to point B. And so as, as more regulation is put on your transportation force, your drivers, they can become consumed with filling out driver vehicle inspection reports for pre and post trip, uh, contributing to uh, updating their logs for hours of service. Um, being able to write down all this reason codes and, and, and these types of things. We have heard directly from our customers that when implementing this proof of delivery technology, it can increase their productivity by 10%. Um, and in some cases, even greater than that. Uh, the, the gains in productivity, as defined by how quickly they can get in and out of the stops that they're making and record information accurately uh, and in a timely manner. And then inventory uh, reduction is probably the last one I'll touch on for now. Uh, but, but fraudulent variance, uh, loss reduction, we are now able to provide complete visibility, chain of custody, if you will, from the time the product is loaded on a truck to the time the deliveries are made and product returned at those uh, customer locations, and then uh, proving or uh, completing the, the end of day, if you will, when product is, is offloaded from the truck back into the warehouse. So uh, shrink, inventory shrink is, is another area of business justification that's dramatically reduced. OK, next slide. Um, I don't think I need to touch more on this. We've talked about compliance, and we've talked about uh, the ability to enhance customer service uh, through having great information at our fingertips as we're running our routes. So uh, Georgia, go, go on to the next. Um, and this is just really a, a slide buildup of how we do it, how we're doing the 
providing this environment for in-cab automation with our mobile conductor platform. So as you can see at the top of the slide, there are a variety of different industries that use our offering. The people who use the mobile technology may be bringing their own device to work. Uh, they may be running an Android operating system. They be, may be running a Windows mobile operating system. But our software is able to run on those different uh, multi-vendor uh, devices. And then below that is a workflow manager. So what we realize is depending on your industry and the products that you are delivering, your workflow in terms of what shows up on that mobile computer and the sequence that we take a driver through to complete their transactions is all going to be a little bit different based on customer industry uh, and your uniquenesses in your company. The point being here is that we have that covered with you uh, with what we're doing with our, our workflow manager and with mobile conductor. Go ahead, Georgia, uh, the next build. All of our implementations have had integration to back office systems. Here's a few of them. SAP, Oracle, QuickBooks, Great Plains, AS400, there's more. Uh, but there are a variety of different ways that we're able to integrate with the systems that you're using to run your company in a variety of different formats and methods for doing that integration. Go ahead to the next bill. And then we, as the provider of mobile conductor, we will continue to enhance our library of plugins to third-party providers of in-cab automation software so that we can continue to deliver on the promise of providing that one device to be used in the cab of the truck, if that is truly the direction our customers need to take. That option is available. Okay. Next. For the folks on the call that are IT and, and even operations related, here's a typical flow of information. Orders come in, whether that's through the internet, whether that's through EDI, fax, a variety of different ways to accept orders. Those orders are sent to a route optimization system in many cases, and they are optimized and sequenced, then sent down to a warehouse for picking and then send over to our mobile conductor server, which really picks up from there and manages the entire day of uh, deliveries while the truck is out on the road doing their stops or running their routes. You know, on the mobile devices, you're able to capture all kinds of information and manifests and creation of uh, clean invoices and that type of thing. And then uh, through the, back through the mobile conductor server is where we up, update your system. So that's just a quick data and information flow. And uh, Georgia, go ahead to the, uh, the next slide. There, I can see it again. So this was the old way. This was perhaps, um, and we've seen out on the, on the road, trucks that have all this technology in them. They have loggers, they have black boxes, they even, you know, driver carrying his own personal phone, and then there's a uh, you know, then there's a PDA for doing other things. It can get really messy inside the cab of a truck. And, and this is what we're hearing from many, many of our prospects and customers was, can you simplify this? Can you really bring it down to um, just a couple of devices, maybe a black box, if you go to the next slide, Georgia, maybe a black box that's connected to the engine uh, diagnostics um, and, and, and a device that's allowing me to do my hours of service, my inspection reports, providing my turn-by-turn -turn directions, allowing me to do proof of delivery as we've defined it. And then really having, if, if and it is possible we've done this, just one data plan. Uh, the data plan may run on the mobile device itself. Uh, there may be a Bluetooth connection between the black box and the uh, mobile computer. And through that mobile computer or mobile device, we're sending all of the long lad information and engine diagnostic information and telematic information. And so we're cutting down the number of data plans that you would have to run uh, in, you know, from each of the trucks. So that's the new way. And that's what we're doing with Mobile Conductor. And that's what we're doing in terms of providing the environment uh, with our technology to be able to uh, run these multiple in-cab technologies. 
I think, uh, Georgia, we can go on. Um, uh, this is kind of a benefit thing, uh, but, but maybe to the last uh, slide for my part. And that is, um, you know, some of the realized benefits, and, and, and really this is the handoff to, to Daryl, Daryl Wilson, our product manager, um, to show you just what is running on that device that you can see this driver um, entering information into uh, in the cab of his truck. Uh, so without, um, without further delay, um, I can turn it over to uh, Daryl or, or Georgia if you want to do that. Daryl, feel free to start when you're ready. All right. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Um, so if we can take a look at the next slide, you know, really what we want to kind of focus on here is, you know, a couple of these particular points from the previous slide, improving driver efficiency, productivity, uh, and dealing with some of the DOT regulatory compliance. Uh, the way Mobile Conductor supports this is really by, as, as previously mentioned, uh, enabling a single interface um, for the driver so that he has the ability to support, um, you know, driver vehicle inspection, hours of service, navigation, messaging, and of course proof of delivery, all from a single interface on uh, a single device in the cab versus uh, utilizing a larger OVC that's hard mounted in the truck um, as well as a handheld device to really log some of the same data um, from both of those. So yeah, next slide please. So really if, uh, if we kind of look at some of the features of uh, what Mobile Conductor um, can supply, uh, you know, really the driver is always going to log in and on the handheld device or in, from the Android perspective, that also could be a tablet. And really when that happens, you know, we can provide a single sign-on to some of these other uh, applications for uh, uh, hours of service. So by logging into one, you're logged into multiples and then kick off some of those features around putting that driver um, in service and so on. From a driver vehicle inspection, these are just some of the screens that uh, you can see where you can select a vehicle um, and or a trailer. Um, we can validate the mileage and then we can go through a, a detailed uh, vehicle inspection that's totally configurable uh, with multiple types of input. Typically, a DVIR inspection would just be a bunch of checks of is there a defect or not. Um, we provide the ability to enhance that a bit and uh, obviously capture that information so it can be uh, reviewed and recorded uh, you know, by vehicle maintenance as well as other management uh, from our server portal. So the other piece of that is the ability to capture additional notes and pictures. So you know, if there's a, a, any sort of damage to the vehicle or the trailer, that type of information is more than just words. Now it's also pictures. So, and then through this process, you know, we can really optimize the flow for the driver um, for that process of selecting his truck, doing his vehicle inspection, and potentially capturing uh, inventory uh, data as well for the deliveries he's going to make. So next slide. So really with, uh, you know, looking at what's happening from a stop perspective for the driver, you know, he can see a, a list of stops. Those stops have been sequenced based on the route optimization uh, process that put these in place. Uh, we can display the customer name and the ticket or and the status as well as other information about that. Um, once we've selected a, a ticket or a customer, uh, then we can actually view the order detail. So if you can move to the next, then that will show us the items and the uh, quantities that have been um, placed on that particular order. And then obviously if there is any sort of adjustment that needs to be taken place or uh, other types of validation, uh, say case scanning or pallet scanning, uh, we can provide that as well. This is just an example of making an adjustment where it's showing quantities ordered, quantities delivered. Uh, you can add or short that and then based on uh, that variance, select a reason, all that information gets stored and then pushed back with that, uh, with that order 
number so you have the details for that. So next slide. Once those adjustments have been made, uh, you know, the completion process uh, would enable us to capture notes uh, and along with the notes capture any uh, pictures. So that works well for any type of damaged product or uh, product being returned. So you have a visual confirmation of why that product is being returned. Um, through the process, we capture electronic signature. We can store those signatures so that they can be um, viewed on our, uh, our server component. They can be exported to back-end systems. They can be attached to PDF uh, receipts for these uh, as well. Uh, next slide. So the rest of the process uh, that we can support uh, payment capture, and that could be multiple payment types, cash, check, credit card. Um, a lot of times things are just done on account, so maybe a PO number. Um, and through that process, then we can generate uh, an invoice uh, printed out on a mobile printer, connected via Bluetooth, um, showing the uh, products that were on there, uh, potentially a quantity ordered and the variance with quantity delivered. Uh, pricing can show or it can be hidden depending upon customer configuration um, uh, as well as a variety of different configurations for this process. So this is what provides a clean invoice to your customer. All those adjustments and the data that's captured goes back to your back-end system which then provides you accurate data um, and timely data back into your back-end system. Next slide. Great. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. You know, um, for those of you in the audience, we wanted to keep this very short for you today. So we really just skimmed across the surface of all this information. And um, what we're going to do is uh, open up the lines so that everybody can um, ask questions. Um, I ask that you mute yourself if you do not wish to ask any questions but still wish to listen. And um, then um, from there, once the webinar is over, if you have any additional questions, we'll reach out to you and we can schedule a time to call. So I'm unmuting everybody on the line. Is there anybody that would like to ask a question for one of our presenters? Okay. I actually got a... Uh, question earlier that I can ask. Uh, this one is for, uh, let's see, this one's for Daryl. So okay. the question is, how quickly can I have an Android system up and running? So question like that, clearly the answer is going to vary, but in the event that, uh, you know, standard workflow is put in place in a uh, basic integration is put in place that can be done in as little as four to six weeks uh, if the integration is more complicated or there's other uh, um, uh, complexities to the workflow obviously that could take longer okay great so I have another question and um, this one is for Steve Steve uh, what do you think that the main benefit of using a platform like Mobile Conductor as a single interface provides? I think that it's simplification and, and I think that in addition to just being a product, um, it is an approach that we take with our customers to help them understand their business drivers for implementing technology. We're helping them kind of sort through a lot of different technology and vendor claims and, and arrive at uh, a good solid selection of different technologies that will last for, for a, a number of years. So in, in addition to a lot of the technology benefits that we talked about in the presentation, the other thing, the other advantage I think is just the approach that we take uh, with our clients to, to help them make good, good sound decisions for the future. Great, thank you. And let's see, I have one more question, and this one's for John. So this person is asking uh, what the one problem seen through Motorola's eyes, their distribution, and 
So I think that what this person is asking is, from Motorola's point of view, uh, what is the, the biggest problem facing distribution transportation? Um, I'd say that the, the biggest challenge is, you know, what we're talking about today is the, the crush of regulations, you know, the hours of service and, and what Steve and Daryl were demonstrating, or Daryl was demonstrating, you know, my pre-trip inspections, my post-trip inspections, and that is, we haven't even delivered anything yet. <laughs> and try to get the sequencing, um, you know, and the driver sequence and the correct order or the accurate order delivered and then reconciled in a timely manner. Just the driver is just getting, you know, tons and tons and tons of data thrown at them. Um, and the challenge is how do we present it easily, you know, in the application, from a business flow, as you saw, um, that he can basically go about and do his job. What he does best is deliver and, you know, deliver on time and be the face of the company, but make it as easy as possible. And that's what we challenge, we, you know, we live every day, like how can we make it as easy as possible, you know, working from a hardware standpoint, but also from, you know, frankly, the software, making sure it flows well, you know, with the extent data application. Great. So that's all the questions that I had in the chat. Uh, is there anybody out there that would like to ask a question? Okay, great. Well, let me just thank everybody for uh, taking time to join us today. We hope that the information was um, helpful and that we didn't take up too much of your time. Like I said earlier, if you have any uh, questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be doing a follow-up email um, a little bit later this week to see how uh, you enjoyed the webinar. And once again, let me thank those of you who attended from across the world. We had a few of you, and we really appreciate you taking the time to join us and, and learn about what we're doing here at Extend Data. So um, without any further ado, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you, everybody. Georgia, are we clear? I believe we are clear to go. Okay. Do you want to just drop? Yes, please. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.